Black Desert Online has been out for almost 10 years now and is still going strong today thanks to consistent updates from developers Pearl Abyss, as well as the game being best in genre for combat and visuals. We love MMORPGs because they let us craft our own stories in the digital realms of a game. Similar to many sandbox MMOs, Black Desert boasts a decade-long history filled with epic adventures and crazy stories. Today, let's embark on a journey through the history of BDO together. Joining me is my editor, a seasoned BDO player. I'll share the most incredible events in BDO history, some you may know, others not. So grab some cron food, saddle up your tier 9, and follow me through the story stories where players left their mark in the history books of Black Desert Online. But first, today's sponsor, Star Trek Fleet Command. Embark on an epic journey in Star Trek Fleet Command, a free-to-play 4X MMO game with an open world set in the ever-expanding Star Trek universe. Customize your fleet and crew to dominate the galaxy. Recruit iconic characters from the next generation, the original series Discovery, and more, including the famous Captain Kirk, Spock, Data, and other fan-favorite characters. Players can even build iconic ships, such as the USS Enterprise, Surprise or the Romulan Warbird, and join millions of players worldwide to form strategic alliances, conquer territories, and explore new worlds on intergalactic missions. And because of Star Trek Fleet Command's fifth anniversary, the game is currently full of special contests, experiences, giveaways, and in-game events. The game is completely free and available on both desktop and mobile, so players can enjoy a seamless gaming experience at home or on the go by connecting with a Scopely account. So don't forget to download Star Trek Fleet Command using the link in the description or the QR code on screen, and use code WARPSPEED to receive a new player content pack for free, as well as 10 epic shards of Kirk. Download now. The Blue Data Leak Let's start with the event horizon of BDO, probably the most impactful thing that happened in the game's history that changed things forever. In the early days, Black Desert Online was shrouded in mystery. We had no clue about enhancement percentages or whether an item provided evasion or damage reduction. Honestly, nobody knew. The developers intentionally kept things unclear. Everything changed in late 2017 when the streamer Blue, together with other data miners, found multiple hidden files inside the latest patch for the game. Typically, in most games, sensitive information is safely encrypted in the game's files, but this time Pearl Abyss kind of forgot to secure those files. They left them in a folder you could easily check without needing encryption or shady tools. This is when Pandora's box was opened, and Blue shared a huge Google document with thousands of lines revealing hidden game data. The document spilled the beans on everything, the tiny hidden numbers, success and failure percentages for gear enhancement, and all those mysterious calculations the game does behind the scenes. This is why when you look at an item in Black Desert now, there's a small number below the main stat, what you might have heard referred to as hidden stat because, well, it was hidden. This might not sound like a big deal now, but back when everything was hidden, only a handful of folks really knew what items were good or bad. People had to spend countless hours testing to discover the optimal build for their class, and not everyone shared their findings. Blue got permanently banned for this, and Pearl Abyss wiped out any evidence of the data leak. It's pretty tough to find information about it online now, but there's no denying that the game would be totally different today if it weren't for this major leak and Blue's role in it. Lakari's Game of Guilds You can't talk about BDO's history without mentioning Lakari, the king of the NA server. Before branching out to other games, Lakari was the biggest streamer in Black Desert, leading the infamous guild Man Up. He gained fame in the BDO community through his video series Game of Guilds, which has become a window into Black Desert's history. This series, full of drama and tension akin to a HBO show, captures the thriving siege scene of that time. It reflects an era in Black Desert where players aspired to join the top guilds, engage in epic battles, and be part of something more meaningful than just grinding mobs in a circle. Lakari's Game of Guilds were the best PvP meme videos I've ever seen. My favourite one was the Barcode arc, which tells the epic tale of how after holding a castle for seven weeks, Manup got zerged by half the server, and in perfect shonen anime fashion, Lakari went into a training arc and got his revenge, claiming back his crown as king of the NA server. Push in, push in! Nuke this shit! Big AOE on my pick! That's a good wipe! Keep going, keep going! Do not stop! Do not stop! Push in, keep pushing in! My ping, my ping! 
We got him, got him. Rock, look deep. If these three words together confuse you, don't worry, you're not the only one. Up until a few years ago, Pearl Abyss used to run a summer event called Mysteries of Summer, a uniquely crafted event where the devs would create puzzles and riddles for the entire player base to figure out. The reward? A fancy title, some cash shop currency, but most importantly, the biggest EP you could imagine. Typically in MMOs, seasonal events are just repetitive, brainless tasks that you do once a day or week for a participation prize. Yeah, Mysteries of Summer was none of that. In fact, it was a cutthroat race to the finish line where very dedicated groups of people would lock themselves away for weeks, trying to figure out a way to complete the riddles before everyone else. This is where the infamous Rock Look Deep hint came from. Pearl Abyss trickled down small hints to help people catch up to the event. Chapter 5 in particular was extremely obscure and took the longest for the community to solve. The solution was to look up a guild in-game called Squares and Compasses and type the bolded words in the guild's picture, which came out to, you forget the rock look deep. PA has been a good sport about it, realising it was a bit of a fuck up on their part, and put out a nice little title to go with it, rock look deep. Orca's Ring. Similar to other MMOs, BDO now offers a variety of endgame gear choices. New and powerful accessories are released periodically, often making the old ones a bit less impressive. During the first two years of the game's launch though, one accessory reigned supreme the Ogre Ring. Now, the name is a bit misleading, as the item wouldn't go in the ring slot, but the necklace slot. As to why you would put an ogre's cock ring around your neck, well, that's none of my business. Huh? The Ogre Ring used to be the best accessory in the game, offering the highest stats. However, getting it was a tough task. You had to defeat ogres in the Mansha Forest, a hotly contested area with a very low drop rate. In the first month of the game, something miraculous occurred. In Black Desert, failing to enhance an accessory usually leads to tears and regrets. So owning an ogre ring was already a significant status symbol, but enhancing it was seen as pure madness. Streamer Orcanaria pulled off something that's a once in an MMO history event. Not only did he acquire four ogre rings, but he also successfully enhanced all of them, obtaining a tri ogre ring within the first month of the game's release. It's hard to express how incredibly unlikely this was. To put this into perspective, having a tri ogre was considered amazing even more than two years after Orca achieved his Trioga. Addicted 1v6. Now let's discuss something that I was personally involved in. Black Desert was once renowned for its epic large-scale battles. Guilds clashed to seize control of a castle, with the victorious guild gaining command and defending it the following week against challengers. Owning a castle was a major advantage, allowing you to perch on the walls and unleash havoc on hordes of enemies attempting to overwhelm a narrow passage. It wasn't uncommon for multiple guilds to form alliances to take down the defense force. This ensured a fierce battle, but with the predictable outcome of the Alliance emerging victorious. However, in August 2017, a shift occurred in the European region. Six guilds gathered their camels and tents to siege the desert castle of Valencia against Addicted, the Defending Guild, a guild that I happened to be a part of at that time. It turned into an utter massacre, with the first player in Europe to earn the ultimate weapon title, which you get for getting over 300 kills, and from Addicted side, we logged over 9,000 kills. It marked the largest battle to date where the defending guild emerged victorious. For me personally, this four hour siege was probably the most fun I've ever had in an MMORPG. I recorded the entire thing and still have it as an unlisted video on my YouTube channel. By the end of the siege, I personally racked up over 200 kills and got the title Special Force Commander for a week. So this one definitely goes down as one of my favorite memories, not just in BDO, but in all MMOs. Push the back area group three in three, two, oh, one. Dead. Chat, you have area ready. Pop it. Make sure you focus killing now and ignore everything else. Okay, really push, 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 push all the way through. Push all the way in. Go, go, go. Go in through the base. Into the base. Into the base, guys. Into the base. Into the base. Into the base. Go, go. Push, 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 push. This is important. Through the gate. Through the gate. 
Come on, boys! Fucking go! Eric, go, 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 go! Eric, one puppet. This is important. Puppet now. D Jules Pen Journey. If you've played BDO, you're familiar with the highs and lows of enhancing gear. If you were around in 2018, you undoubtedly remember the adventure to pen by D Jules. European streamer Jules was determined to achieve a pen weapon, the most challenging enhancement level. Unlike accessories, a failed weapon enhancement doesn't break the weapon, but decreases its level. As a small consolation, you earn fail stacks, increasing your chance of success on the next try. Despite numerous failures, Jules persisted. Gradually, more and more people joined along for the ride, witnessing what was at the time the most unlucky man in Black Desert Online. Eventually, he finally got his Penzarka at 348 fail stacks, one of the highest stacks seen at the time, immortalising this moment forever in the history books of Black Desert. Server Merge Player conflicts in BDO don't just occur in organised sieges, but also in the open world. Currently, there are two servers in the West, the European and American ones. However, the situation was a bit different initially. In the first year, each server was divided into three, Alliston, Jordine and Croxus for EU, and Uno, Orwin and Eden for NA. All three of these servers were well populated, each with its own distinct community, leading to frequent arguments about which one was the best. Initially, it was more like dogs barking at each other from behind a closed gate. However, in late 2016, the three servers merged into one, sparking one of the biggest conflicts in BDO history. This union brought about daily open world skirmishes, guild war declarations, drama, and the formation of new friendships and rivalries. It marked perhaps what was most the active period in the game's PvP history, with every guild engaged in constant battles day and night to determine the top contender and ruler of this newly unified server. It was a remarkable and peak moment in BDO, and it's doubtful that we'll ever witness something like that again. Shovelgate Pre-server merge time, PvP drama wasn't the only controversy. Right before the server merge, the largest ban wave in BDO history occurred, and it all revolved around a shovel. There's not much to elaborate on, but in late 2016, people discovered that, by a clever use of game mechanics, they could essentially AFK and make big money by shoveling in the desert. Normally, if you use a shovel in the desert, there's a slight chance at gathering a rare item. The catch is you'll take damage over time, and your inventory will be filled with junk after a while. However, some crafty individuals figured out that if you filled your inventory with random items, leaving only one slot open for the rare drop, and position yourself in a very specific desert spot where the developers forgot to apply the debuff, you could amass wealth much, much faster than anyone not employing this method. And so people started digging. Pearl Abyss wasn't pleased with this, leading to the most extensive ban wave in BDO's history. Thousands of accounts, including guild leaders, streamers, and hardcore players, were banned permanently. Exiled to the desert, never to be seen again. The Cacao Event In December 2020, it was announced that Cacao Games, the western publisher for Black Desert, would step down, giving full control to Pearl Abyss. Most players viewed this as a positive change. Cacao, whilst having a less than stellar reputation, wasn't all that bad though. In fact, they organised one of the coolest events in BDO's history. Cacao's team of GMs and CMs orchestrated a community event open to the entire player base. It was a campaign where players followed the GMs through a series of challenges and puzzles, unlocking prizes for the whole server as they progressed. He disappeared. Okay, we have to be very quiet. Follow me and stay on your guard. Said Divios, the world champ. During the journey, players faced some of the server's most geared and skilled PvP players, all equipped with a pure black stone, an item which significantly boosted their stats. The story reached a theatrical climax with a surprising twist, pitting the party against a player powered up with all of the pure black stones. The entire event was streamed and coordinated by Cacao with minimal help from Pearl Abyss. It was a unique and passionately executed event by the people at Cacao Games, and one that anyone that participated in will never forget. 
the pay-to-win protests. As mentioned earlier, Kakao didn't have the best reputation in the community. Despite promising the game wouldn't be pay-to-win, they began introducing questionable items into the cash shop only a few months after the game's launch. One such item was the value pack. At the time, it sparked significant controversy, leading to a mass exodus of players, almost causing the game's demise. Although there's no chart to illustrate the massive population drop as this was pre-Steam, the game went from being vibrant and thriving to a deserted wasteland. The remaining players, however, didn't stay silent and protested the best way they could. Guilds in both NA and EU collectively changed their guild icons to express their dissatisfaction with the predatory monetization. Since castle-holding guild icons appeared in every city, this protest even made some news in the MMORPG scene. The protests lasted a few months, but eventually players just started to accept the new monetization. The game's population slowly started to grow again, and whoever was in charge of the game's monetization realized that the player base and their wallets were nicely lubed up and ready to take an even bigger fist. Yeah, I've paid 100 euros for this game. Like, you yeah. have as well, haven't you, Greg? Like, why should I have to spend another 30 euros to get a ghillie suit? What, why, why is that fair? Like, why should I have to do that? the first international tournament. Like all PvP games, Black Desert has had its fair share of EU vs NA drama. However, since MMOs usually lack ways to bridge the gap between servers, this mainly serves as fodder for forum warriors engaging in debates over who boasted the best players and guilds. After many years though, this ongoing debate could finally be settled. Kakao Games organised a 3v3 tournament in each region to determine the best players who would represent their region at TwitchCon 2018. Following a close 2-2 result, NA emerged victorious, winning the show match and earning the title of the strongest region. EU hasn't emotionally recovered since. The Russian Siege. 3v3 battles between regions became a reality, but the dream of having a full-on siege between two servers remained just that, a dream. After Pearl Abyss assumed full publishing control of every server though, that dream started turning into a reality. Initially, the Korean server faced off against the Southeast Asian ones, resulting in a one-sided fight favouring the Koreans, who were way ahead in terms of gear and experience. Then, in February 2022, Pearl Abyss organised a clash between the European and Russian servers. Yeah, not the best timing. The siege was cancelled after two fights, with each region claiming a victory. Two workers, one node. What if I told you that you could send two workers to one node? Enter the biggest scandal in the BDO content creator scene, Blade Bokez, a massively popular life skill guru who got banned by Kakao Games for exploiting a bug. This bug allowed him to send multiple workers to one node, effectively doubling the amount of resources he could gather. This stirred up a huge debate at the time, and Blade made numerous attempts to clear his name and prove his innocence. If you're into the drama and want all the details, there's hours of videos and reads available online about this topic. However, the legendary two workers, one node will forever be a cherished meme in the BDO community. But that's it for this video. As always, let me know your thoughts on Black Desert Online and what's your favorite memory with BDO? If you've never played BDO, are there any other legendary moments in MMO history that you were a part of? Help us out with a like to appease the algorithm gods. Social media on screen, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.